Welcome everybody to another video over making decisions. I'll be the decision maker again, J-Rod, and today we're going to talk about active form flows within decisions. Active form flows are the new way to auto-populate your forms and auto-populate your data repeaters. Basically what they are is they're just flows that run on the form level. So I have a little bit of an example here that we're going to configure to demonstrate how active form flows can be used. So I'm going to go into my data repeater and we're going to look at the properties and we're going to specifically view the active form flows area here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to configure a series of active form flows that are going to auto populate and show or hide certain components. It is crucial when we use active form flows that we make sure we name our form control elements specifically. So here I'm going to name this the name text box just so it matches the data name it's associated with. The quantity number box is going to stay the same. We've got the cost number box. That's a good name for it. And needed by date, date picker, we're going to keep that name. And then we just have a comment section. This is just a subflow that will run and allow me to put comments on a particular row of the data repeater item. So now what we're going to do is we're going to auto populate this date picker. And how we do that is we're going to click on the checkered box or the base canvas here. And when we do that, we're going to go into active form flows. So I'm going to left click active form flow. And I'm going to say this is auto populate. If I can spell it auto populate um, date needed. All righty. And I want this to run at start up. Now, this, is, it's, this means that this flow, this active form flow, is going to run when a new data repeater row is added. This is helpful if you want to have default values for your data repeater rows. And in this case, for the needed by date picker, I do. So we're going to set it there. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to edit the edit rule flow. And I'm going to change the name of the edit rule flow just so it's specific. And I can easily know what this flow is to be used for. This one's going to be very simple because all we're going to do is we're going to go into the steps toolbox. We're going to get current date. We can get the current date with the time or we can get the current date without the time. And what we're going to do is I'm going to get it without the time. I'm going to put this here. Make sure my lines are straight. I'm going to put this here. Perfect. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to output that information into the form data and I'm going to put this into the needed by um, date picker. I'm going to expand this and I'm going to say value. That's what I'm going to do and you'll notice that every time this row is created in the parent form the default value will be displayed in the needed by date form control. I'm going to click OK. So it's a very simple, simple flow. And then we're going to click Save and then we're good. Close this, click OK. We're going to close this. And I've already pre-configured my flow to display this data repeater. So I'm just going to run this flow, and I'm going to add data. And notice, I have a, um, a date already pre-filled. And it's running. And it's auto-populating the current date and showing it. Now that we've configured the date picker to auto populate with the current date, now what we're going to do is demonstrate how you can hide your controls utilizing active form flows. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to hide this comment button. And we're only going to show it if there are values in the quantity and the cost number box that are not zero. And so how we do that is we're going to click on our surface. We're going to hide that comment form control by clicking on the add for the active form flows. And we're going to say a hide comments button. And we're going to want this to run on different places. We're definitely going to want this to run at startup. 
because we want it to immediately hide that form control. But we also want to make sure that we will change the form control execution when a value is entered into the cost number box and in the quantity number box. So whenever those values are changed, we want this rule to trigger and run to make sure if it needs to determine whether that comment box should be revealed or hidden. So I'm going to switch this to hide comment button. I'm going to copy this so I can always rename my active form flow. You always want to rename your flows so that you can keep track of them. OK, so hide comments button, toolbox. Now, this is the cool thing about active form flows. If I go down here to a category called form rules, here I could expand this. And I have access to all these different controls that will allow me to enable multiple, disable multi multiple controls, enable a single or disable a single control. And then we can go down to the bottom here. We can hide a single or hide multiple controls. So what we're going to do is we want to check if the cost and quantity number box are equal to zero. And so what we want to do is we'll probably need to create our own custom rule for this. So what we're going to do is we're going to say pick create rule. So pick create rule. And then I'm going to create my own rule. It's going to be a statement rule. And it's just going to say is cost and quantity equal to zero. So we're going to say if we're going to select our inputs. We always have to define our inputs for our rules. So I'm going to say this is the quantity, QTY, and cost. And then I'm going to set this to decimal, and I'm going to set this to decimal, because those are the values that this input rule should be expecting. And it's just a simple AND rule. So I'm going to say is quantity equals 0 and add a condition cost next equals 0. Perfect. So I'm going to say see if both of those equal 0. If one of them doesn't equal 0, well, then we want to display the comments box, because we're assuming that the user is going to be filling out this information, and they may want to comment on why they're filling it out. But if both of them evaluate to 0, then we want to hide that comments box. OK. So that's a rule. Pretty simple. Is cost and quantity equal to 0? Quantity equals 0, and cost equals 0. I'm going to save this rule. And then we're going to go back into the Active Form Flow Designer. Now, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to remove that search category. And I'm going to go to the Form Rules category. And I'm going to grab the Hide. And then I'm going to grab the Show Control. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to connect this up. And I'm going to say Cost is Select from Flow. We want Form Data. And we want to get the cost number box. We want to grab the value and then select done. And then we want to do the same thing for the quantity. So select from flow, form data. We want the quantity number box, value, done. All right, so if they're both equal 0, we want to hide the control. So if they both equal 0, which is true, we're going to hide control. And then we're going to attach this to the end. And now what's going to happen is we need to select from flow the form control we want to hide. So we're going to change that input mapping. We're going to go to form data. And notice I have the list of all the form controls. And so the form control that we want to hide is that button, which in this case I've called mine the comment subflow or comment um, sub dialog flow. So I'm going to select this one and I'm going to select done. And I'm just going to do the same thing with the show control, because if either one of those has a value in it, we want to display the comments box. So then I'm going to do the same thing with the form control. Select from flow, form data, 
and then we are going to select the Comet subflow. Now, in your situation, you might have named your button on your data repeater differently, and so you would select the name that you gave that button. So this is the completion of this hide and show control. Now let's test to see if it works. So I'm going to save. I'm going to click OK. And you see the reason why it's called the Comet SB flow is because when I click on that button, that's the name I gave it. If I change this, then I would have to go back into that active form flow and remap everything because that name would, be, would then be invalid. OK, let's go back to testing. So yes, we're going to close this. I'm going to run this in a dialog. I'm going to add the data. So we see this auto populates. And you see my comment button is not there. And when I add this, it's not there. So now I'm going to just add a value here. And notice my comment button came back because that rule has now evaluated false. So I said hide, or I said show the control. In the second row, I'm going to switch this to 100. And now my comment button comes back. And then I can allow the user to be able to interface with that button when there's value pieces of data. I can do it for both values. And then the comment button will still stay there and be available for the user to interact with. So now that we've configured the active form flow to auto-populate a row, we've configured an active form flow to hide and show a button on the data repeater. Now what we're going to do is we're going to configure an active form flow to throw a validation based on some criteria that we determine. So let's go into our data repeater. And what I'm going to do is we're going to go back into the active form flows category here, and we're going to limit the number that can be typed in here. So we are going to determine if the quantity is greater than five. We only want people to type in a number that is less than five. So we're going to write a rule that's going to evaluate if that number is greater than 5. And if it is greater than 5, then we're going to throw a validation. So how we do this is we're going to create a new active form flow. And we're going to say, is quantity greater than 5? And we'll say this is active form flow. And what we're going to want to do is we want definitely want this one to run on value change. Because if a user sees that error and they fix it and make the quantity requested to be 4 or 3 or 2 or whatever it is, then we want this rule to evaluate that new number. So we're going to run this on the value change. Now we're going to edit the rule flow. And oops, before I do that, I forgot to rename it. So let me just grab this. Edit the rule flow, and we're going to paste this here. OK, now we're going to go back to the toolbox, and we're going to go through the form rules. And what we're going to do is we are going to grab a rule, and it's just going to be the default greater than rule. Since Decisions has those default rules in the toolbox, there we go, greater than number. And all we're going to do is let's evaluate if the form data my quantity number box value is greater than 5. Boom. If it is greater than 5, then we're going to go back to our toolbox. And we're going to go back to the form rules. And what we're going to do is we're going to set a validation. Right, Because we want to have a validation set for that specific control. And if it is not greater than 5, then we want to clear the validations for that form control. So 
if you're setting up a validation on your forms using active form flows, you will need to use these two steps. One to set the validation, and then you need another one to clear the validation once the user has fixed that issue. So if the quantity is greater than five equals to true, then we wanna set a validation. We're gonna connect this to the end step, connect this to the end step. And then if the rule evaluates false, so if the number is greater than five equals to false, then we're going to clear that validation. So with the set validations, you need to select two inputs. You need to select the form control, which in this case is the quantity number box. In my example, this could be any form control you want it to be. Select done. And then I have my validation issues. So here what we're going to do is you're going to actually set this to be a constant. And the reason why we want to do that is because you want to configure what valid the validation message and the type of validation, whether it's just a warning or whether it's a fatal error where you don't want the user to proceed out of the form until they have fixed this error. So set the validation issues to constant and click add. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to change this dropdown list and I'm going to set it to fatal. And I'm going to say quantity cannot be greater than five. I'm going to click OK. So that's my validation. So what's going to happen is if my rule evaluates where the number and the quantity is greater than five, then it's going to throw this fatal validation issue that I have configured in my active form flow. Then what I'm going to do is if the user fixes this, then I want to clear that validation. And this input is a lot simpler than the set validations because all I need to do is select a form control that I want the validations to be cleared from. So in this case, it's the quantity number box since that's the rule I am editing and configuring. Okay. So let's close and save this and let's test this. Okay. And we're gonna close and save this. And then I'm gonna run my flow. So in a new dialogue. So I'm gonna add this. And notice I have my input value still defaulting, defaulting to the current date. Notice I have the comment button has been invisible. And then once I put a number here, it will reveal. And now, since this is the quantity number box, we're gonna set this to six. And look at that, my validation ran. And it says quantity cannot be greater than five. So now I'm gonna set it to five. My validation is clear. So I have confirmed that my rule is working as expected. And now I can constrict the user submissions for the quantity to be five or less. And I can add more complex rules if I want, if there are further parameters that I want to add, but that's how we use active form flows in the decisions form designer. You can have one to auto-populate, displaying the current date. You can have them evaluate the values of other form controls and hide a different form control or you can specify the parameters of the expected values for a specific control box and have a throw of validation if the user does not conform to those validations. That is all for today. This is how we make decisions on our active form flows and constricting our forms. I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you next time.